And in the course of the prayer session, Pastor Asodo stopped and asked that we all sing the national anthem. He likened Nigeria to a big family where there will be chorus, struggles, even injustice. But he also added that whatever the challenges, we must always remember that families stay together. To buttress his point, Pastor Azodo told the story of what happened in 1981 when, as a medical student, he participated in the West African University's games hosted by Coach Divoa in Yamosukro. In the course of the competition, according to Pastor Azodo, a Nigerian student was molested, and the contingents from our country said the competition would not continue unless the president of Cote d'Ivoire came down to apologize to them. Ministers from the government, now I'm quoting, ministers from the government of Cote d'Ivoire came to plead with us, but we insisted that only an apology from their president would do. I felt very proud to be a Nigerian, head of Cote. Eventually, it took the intervention of the Nigerian ambassador to Cote d'Ivoire for the contingents from our country to stop the demonstration that had held up the competition for two days. Now what those students demonstrated was not only our power as a nation, but also the power of our unity. They were fighting over an injustice done to a single Nigeria. We need such solidarity today. And despite our challenges, we are already seeing glimpses in that direction. For me, Nigeria is that young man in Samson Itodo who is working day and night to create a pathway for change by ensuring that the country where the demographics teach heavily in favor of young people can not continue with a policy founded on the erroneous notion that the wisdom of Solomon had anything to do with the age of Methuselah. Nigeria is that young lady in Lagos, Temi Giwa Tubosun, who took it upon herself to ensure that those who need blood donation across the country are well served and on time with our live bank organization. Through our effort, the lives of hundreds of our citizens have been saved. Nigeria is my beautiful sister, Ibiduni Godalo, who, despite her own disappointments, decides to put smiles on the faces of other aspiring mothers by deploying her personal resources to pay for their IF, IVF treatment. Nigeria is Kechi Okuchi, who proudly draped herself in the green-white green flag to mark the 57th independence of our country in the United States, where she's making many of us proud. This is a young lady who could be said to have been let down by Nigeria at the most difficult period in her life, even when lucky to be alive, unlike her friends and classmates caught in the same plane crash. But she is still proud of being in Nigeria. Nigeria is Aisha Waziri Umar, who is planting libraries in those parts of the Northeast, devastated by Boko Haram. It is a way of fighting back against the misguided zealots who see education as a sacrilege to be destroyed along with the future of millions of our citizens. Nigeria is Oronto Douglas, who diagnosed with cancer in 2008, invested the last seven years of his life setting up and nurturing a school for orphan children in his native Okoroba in Bayelsa State. The examples are just too many of change agents who are taking up spaces to make a difference in our world. But the message is simple. Our drive and commitment to making Nigeria great should be anchored on the fact that we also have a role to play and numbers don't matter. What matters is the resolve that we will be part of that positive change. Let me illustrate that point as I try to conclude my intervention this morning with the biblical account of the 12 spies as recorded in the book of Numbers chapter 13. The people of Israel had been set free from their captivity and servitude in Egypt. They wandered through the wilderness during which a number of them died. On reaching Mount Sinai, they were given the laws to govern their affairs and the templates they needed to worship. With national census concluded, they each towards the border of Canaan, ready to enter the land that had been promised their fathers. Suggestions, however, came from the leadership that a search party be sent to look at the inhabitants and how good the land really was. Twelve gentlemen were selected, one from every tribe, and they were sent as spies. 
For 40 days, they explored the length and breadth of the land and returned with sufficient proof. About the goodness of the land, there was no deviation in the reports. However, while 10 of the 12 files concurred that the land was indeed good, they added a misleading bit. We are not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than us. It is a land that divorced its inhabitants, and all the people who we saw in it are men of great stature. We seem like grasshoppers in our own eyes, and we look the same to them. One can argue that the ten spies possess critical spirit, and there's nothing wrong with positive criticism. But they went further, not only to dampen the morale of the people, but also to incite them against the leadership. Having lost their self-worth, like many Nigerians have done today, the ten spies likened themselves to grasshoppers and added that they were seen as grasshoppers, even by the Canaanites. How did they know that? We have many of such people in Nigeria today. The negative men and women who tell you that nothing can change, that our country is doomed. Meanwhile, Caleb and Joshua saw possibilities, and with that they also gave hope to the people that victory was attainable. Unfortunately, their report could not convince the people, and their voices were drowned. As a consequence, Israel wandered additional 38 years in the wilderness with our entire generation wiped out. What the foregoing means is that we should not continue to listen to the naysayers in our midst who do not mean well for our country. Whatever may be the differences in opinion, there is more that unites us as Nigerians than there is to divide us. While some of the current agitations are not bad in themselves, since they reflect the broad diversity of our country and the different experiences that must be on the table to make us great. We must also recognize that it takes so little to set a house on fire. Any fool can do that. Meanwhile, it takes efforts, perseverance, and sacrifice to build. That does not come easy. Admittedly, ours is a fragile polity, but the social and economic bonds that unite us are strong and hard to resolve. Yet the task of conscious nation building has hardly been done. The rights of citizens are still shackled by boundaries of state of origin and ethnicity. The excessive angovers of prolonged military rule are still with us in the form of impulsive arbitrariness. Our government still finds it easy to call in military force to quell elementary civil unrest. We are here to teach our citizens from infancy the values of group living and how to compete, uh, compete as individuals without resorting to primordial aid where we cannot prevail. However, Despite all this, the real challenge is that, is that of creating enough wealth to cater for the need of our huge population. If we remain a poor country with an external reserve that is less than the cash holding of Facebook alone, our competitions might get more bloody and our future more speculative and tentative. Our task, therefore, is to make Nigeria a land of equal opportunity for all, a nation whose unity is not decreed as non-negotiable, but is guaranteed by the practical incentives it offers for all to want to stay in and perfect the union. As I stated earlier, the enemy is not the other who speaks a different language or worships a different god. The enemy, unfortunately, is that person with predatory behavior who has benefited the most from our country, but who, like the farmer, in the story with which I started this intervention, only rewards Nigeria's love with eating her up in bits to the detriment of the majority. This tiny group, which is present in every region and religion, has maintained its hold by serving, by setting the majority against themselves. We need to rescue our country from their destructive grip. Therefore, Recognizing that we may not always agree on the details of how to perfect our union, it becomes problematic the moment any argument is framed in a way that makes the incumbent think it is an attempt to distract him from governance or to get power through the back door. But history also shows that leaders who improve their society are not those who divide along the voting pattern in the elections that brought them to power but those who can bring diverse citizens together 
to work for the common good. <laughs> Pastor Kodju, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, as I take my seat on a day such as this, my charge to all Nigerians is simple. We should see ourselves as allies in a struggle for a better country that is bigger than any and yet needs all of us working together. Thank you very much for listening. <laughs>